Three months. Three months straight. It has to be every single day. If you skip a day, you have to start all over three months. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. If you skip a day, you have to start, start all, all over. over. Yes, it happened to me. I had to start all over. Jesus. I did it two times. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking We're crazy. human, though. Okay? So, you have to do three months. Wow. Every day, three months. It has to be consistent. So, <laughs> I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> or you start all over. So, like, uh, next word, I guess. Retention should be practiced perfectly four times a day. What the fuck is retention? Retention? Uh, I don't know, I guess do it four times a day. <laughs> I didn't really do it four times a day, I did it like three times a day. Oh, you mean shoot a shot or not? Yeah. I did in the morning, right when I get up. In the middle of the day, like... Like, it's like doing Gayachi, then the sun going down. Easy. It's purified. All your nadi will be clear. You follow the rhythms of the nature. Do nadi short enough, you're good. Three months straight. You're good. That clears all kinds of impurities, even karmas, even. Nice. Yeah. So, um, okay, it says right here, it says four times, so... I didn't do it four times. So right here it says uh, early morning, midday, evening, and midnight. Whoa, is that tantric or what? <laughs> midnight. What the midnight. fuck? Midnight. <laughs> so get up at 12. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not each other. Midnight. It's midnight. It's midnight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Midnight, so that retention is gradually held up to 80 counts in one sitting. Wow, that's a lot. I didn't do that much. Actually, maybe I have to start all over again. <laughs> and maybe I'm fine. I don't know. Maybe I'm making a big deal. But they, I, when, I, when I said, oh, I skipped a day or a couple of days, and I started it, and I'm doing it all the time. You know? Oh, uh, you have to start all over again. I'm on, oh. What the heck, yeah? Who told you this, Dharma Bodhi? Dharma Bodhi. I asked him for, um, what's it called, um, a meta practice. He didn't give it to me. I asked him for this stuff. And it gives, like, empowerment. So I was like, I asked him, what was it? Double breath practice. He goes, no, no. Or no, he goes, do you smoke marijuana or ganja still? I go, oh, yeah, I smoke ganja all the time. <laughs> you know? He goes, oh, I can't give you the practice. I go, damn it. So some practices I can do, some practices I can do. Are and you addicted to ganja? I guess I am. But uh, I'm not smoking right now. I don't smoke in a day anyway. If I do smoke right now, it's like, I'm going to go to sleep. I will go to sleep in front of a movie or something. <laughs> like, a, a, like the one I have on right now. Um, the Samurai of Thailand. Oh, The Way of the Samurai. But it's a samurai in Ayotthaya. That was a cool movie. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> so, uh, well done. <laughs> so at first, um, there is perspiration. You start sweating in the beginning. Right? In the middle stage, trembling. You start having like little shakes. And then you're going through all the cities. It makes you sweat. makes you tremble. So you're going through all the spiritual bodily transformation. This pranaya. And then you start to have experience. Oh, these are like spiritual effects. My body trembling, my sweating, my uh, all these things. In the highest stage, complete steadiness. In the highest stage, complete steadiness. And therefore, the breath should be without. Boom. So you start to experience what the body feels through spiritual stuff. And you're doing it through pranayama. Pranayama is a cleanser. It cleans all your nadis. When you're, all your nadis are going through this cleansing, you're going to go through this bodily stuff, trembling and stuff. Um, you can go through this stuff also just with other practices. But pranayama is easy. See? It's then, when you have these experiences, then you know what it means, how, how it feels when the, the body's trembling, that spiritual feeling, that energy going around. You know what that is because you experienced it. Oh, that, that's what the trembling they're talking about. That tremble. But first you go, you get into the sweats after a couple of weeks, and then your body 
body starts to have this trembling vibration all over. And you'll start to see literally trembling. But that's the pranayam clearing all your nadis. When the body trembles, uh, that's sometimes, because all your nadis are Sometimes my, my, my legs tremble. Well, different parts of your body will tremble. Pinkies, thumbs, my hands. Do that. That's because somebody needs healing. But that's by Reiki. That's energy passing through. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't mean all your nadis are clear or anything. Uh, yeah, you just have aspects of parts of your body just goes through trembling moments. So, it's, bro, when you, ha when you get Reiki transmission, aren't you supposed to, like, get cleaned by the Reiki that's inside you already? The Reiki clear the, the t attunement opens it up and it clears the center channel without you trying because you're getting an attunement. It's called empowerment. It's like initiation. Is it eternal or it can get dirty again? Nope. It can't. No, it's eternal. If it gets dirty, you clean it with Reiki. You you have Reiki empowerment. It went in already. Yeah. So if, if you're like off, like, well, this truck is off, I just, you know, I work with this stuff. Very or nice. Energy yeah. center. Energy. You can't really work with the chakras. You can work with the nadis, though. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, next thing. Rub the body with the perspiration from the labor of pranayama. The body derives firmness and steadiness from this. Oh, yeah, I heard from Misha Guru, from Sadhguru, so in a video. Rub all the sweat off. Yeah, you can't, you're not supposed to take the sweat off because then you take all the energy out. Yes, because it's different. Is it, people do it in exercise. They like bring a little towel and take the little sweat off. But oh, no, like, that's different sweat. What do you mean? That's a different sweat. That's working out sweat. That's not pranayam sweat. Okay. Pranayam sweat is different. Oh, maybe you're not understanding. The trembling you get in your body, that's spiritual energy. The sweating you get is spiritual energy. All that is spiritual transformation. So why are you going to take it off? Oh, I take shower. Oh, my God. Ah! You rub it. But people, and then, no, and then but, you dry it No, up, but listen, up. listen, listen, listen. There's also spiritual transformation when people do yoga, but people think that doing yoga is like a workout, too. Oh, yeah, I know. And you're sure not supposed to take the sweat off, even when you're doing yoga. No, no. If you're doing yoga, don't take the sweat off. You leave it on for a while and then take a shower a half hour later or an hour later. You leave it on there. You wait until it dries. That's all. You're going to dry. You're not going to stay sweaty forever. <laughs> <laughs> like, it never dries. <laughs> Once it's on there, you can take a shower. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you can wash, but you just... You you rub it. It's like a bianga. You rub the sweat. And then you do circles mm. around your joints, even with the sweat. Tasty. That's self-love. But it's better than oil. Nice. You rub it. You do the same thing as a bianga. Very beautiful. Yeah, so guys. In the beginning stages of the practice, food consisting of milk and ghee is recommended. So there's certain foods you have to take milk. Vegans won't do well, I guess. Vegans are dumb. <laughs> vegans are dumb. They're just vegans. They just have to do different stuff, different practices. There's different practices for veganism. So, but this one, I guess, it's not really vegan. <laughs> no. Uh... Upon being established in the practice, um, such restrictions are not necessary. Dude, the milk is the king of all rejuvenators, and the queen is ghee. You just have to make sure it's like from the right cow, and they're like grass-fed, and treated properly. <laughs> yeah, not the other stuff. Yeah. Just as lions, elephants, and tigers are gradually controlled, so the prana is controlled through practice. Otherwise, otherwise, the practitioner is destroyed. Holy shit. That means you'll go crazy and end up in a mental hospital. Yeah! <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> by, prop by proper practice of pranayama, etc., all diseases of erratic are eradicated. Through improper practice, all diseases can arise. Fuck, that's yeah. kind of scary. Hiccups, asthma, coughs, headache, ear and eye pain, and various other diseases are due to disturbances of the vital air. Baka. Yes. Failure memory, headaches, pain. Yeah, all that is baka. It I sounds like someone I know. I don't care how dedicated you are to your teacher and all this stuff. Being dedicated doesn't do everything. Devotion, 
Devotion is something deeper than what people think in their head. There's a definition. What is devotion? Me, devotion to yourself, being practicing. I see a Gurudev, right? Gurudev. Yeah. Right? Krishna. Right? Bharata. He did a Nadi Shodana every single morning. I know, I told this to people, and people were like, I don't believe you. What? He did it every single morning. What does that mean? His nadis are clear. But we got a weird sangha. <laughs> it's because Iskon, <laughs> it's because when, I think when Prabhupada came to preach, he wanted to like prove like, like devotion as the ultimate yeah. path. Yeah, and yeah. like just like well, wipe off. Bhakti. I know, but wipe up all the hippies, like, because the hippies were like all over the place. So he just wanted to establish that, but he wasn't really talking down on yoga. He was just like trying to establish, like yeah, I think path. that's what it probably is. Yeah. And then the fanatics just got really fanatical. It got it. weird, yeah. It, they didn't look at uh, yeah, exactly. Instead of saying, "Oh, bhakti is the best," like now I know bhakti is good. Like everybody knows, even tantrics know. Come on, bhakti is a high path. Even Dharma Bodhi says, "Oh, bhakti is a very high path. It's a high path." Remember that video? Yeah. So, like, dude, like it's in the books, but nobody knows what it really is like. Or at least in America, not even in India, not only like good teachers know. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't mean, oh, I practice bhakti, it doesn't mean that I can reject every yoga there is. You know, no. There's a lot of devotees, even in India, Krishna devotees, that do practices, but they just don't do it in front of people. They just do it on their own, you know? It's an internal thing. You don't have to prove anything to people externally. <laughs> yeah. That's yoga. Indeed. Um, um, yeah, hiccups, asthma, coughs, headache, ear, ear, eye, you know, uh, various other diseases are due to disturbances of the vital air. So if you have all these things building up, then you got really disturbed about that. With, if you have more, uh, like, more than one of these, you have a very disturbed about that. Dude, I know a lot of people like that. Yeah, man, me too, man. Sick. They're not, they can't survive, and they can't live, they're like all over the place, they don't know what to do, it's all disturbed vata. Did you hear that wind blowing, you know? They can't ground, they can't oh, settle down, you know what I'm saying? And then, always wanting too much money. That's of saying, oh, the money's buying, paying for my roof, this and that, that's what I need money for. But people just want to make money to party. People don't know how to make money to live anymore. They don't want to pay bills. They don't want to do nothing. They don't want to trade. We live in a very weird world. We're like, it's like somebody's trying to make us socialists in this world. Because we want to just use the money for party. Oh, you got to share. I don't want to pay bills. Government pay my bills. That's what we're getting into. It's our, our head, so we have to be clear. That's why all this pranayama is good for you. Yeah. Look at all the, these people. They all chant, but they're all socialists. They want people to feed them. And those freeload off temples. That's and bad. Why don't they go farm and give to the temple and then eat with the temple? Hmm. You see? Why don't you do work as you eat from the temple? Give to them and then take back by eating there. That's a good trade. But nobody does that. They freeload. See, that's the difference. Everybody has to do something. Everybody. It's just karma. That's what n nature, earth wants, dude. Mutual trading. No freeloading. Wow. Look at... What's his name? Ja you know, I don't want to say any, you know, names. <laughs> I think you're recurring. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy, leaving this girl behind, goes, hey, I'm this and that. I gotta go to the temple. And he goes, eats. I'm a brahmachari. And he's with a girl, you know what I'm saying? Leaves a girl behind. Don't say we're together. Because I get to eat a lot of food, like with a big mountain like this. Freeloading. Goes, walks away. Freeload. Over there. Freeload. And then goes to the beach and surf in India. <laughs> oh, I already gave it away. Um, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's uh, Nadi's dream. Impure. Impure Nadi's. I don't care how many fucking grounds you're doing. That's freeloading. No good. You have to give energy. You can't just take energy. You have to give too. You give and you take. Both should be there. 
both. <laughs> so you can take if you're giving. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thanks for that plan. But giver, giving is better than taking. No, no. That's not better. That's no better. Because you have to take too. Somebody offers you something, right? You didn't even ask for it, right? Well, at the, at the point when you don't ask for it and somebody offers you something out of nowhere, like say, right? Oh, I'll take this. You should take it because it's rude not to take. And then you should take it because it's meant to be given to you karmically. The universe is given to you. So you have to take it. It's not better. Giving is not better. Okay. Giving is get creating good karma. Create giving is creating good karma. Uh oh. And taking? Taking, you're receiving karma. Oh yeah. You're tuning that out already. Too hard. Well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> so and creating good karma is not bad because it's good. <laughs> it just doesn't mean better. <laughs> no, but it's still it's still karma though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When fat or mucus is excessive, shot karma. <gasps> that sounds so creepy. Shot karma. The six cleansing techniques should be practiced before pranayama. What the fuck is shot karma? It sounds Others scary. in whom the doshas, phlegm, wind, and bile are balanced should not do them. What the, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I just joked. We gotta read this now. We gotta read this. I just know about Mighty Shoulder Mat. So there, the end of that. I just, I just know about Parabdha Karma, Chanchita Karma, and never heard about the other you one. Just, you can't escape Parabdha Karma. That you have to do. Probably the karma is like, it has to come. Even when it has to do with sexuality. Did you know that? No. If I'm thinking of the right karma, there's a certain karma that you can't avoid. If you avoid it, it's going to come. It's going to come anyways, gonna even come. if you're retarded. Yeah, if you're retarded. <laughs> it's going to come, it's going to come until you finish it. And if you finish it, it won't come again. There's even karma like where you have to have sex with somebody. Past life, whatever thing. That's like Parada karma. And like have a baby about of somebody. That's Parada. But I heard. It's like bonding karma. Until you, you do it, and it's, you're released. And then I say, I have sex with this person. Man, this karma is so fucking strong. It's, you know, damn, it won't go away and shit. But it's not always the same. Some people can be obsessive. You have to read the energy right. You have to read the energy right. That's why you push things away. You push things away, and then they come back in a healthy way, and then you know. You push things away. Um... Uh, uh, and if somebody's obsessed, you don't connect with that because it could be dangerous. You have to connect sexually with that with that particular thing. It could be like a fucking murderer or killer. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's there's certain bonds, and sexuality is part of it. And so as it becomes kind of, you have you're bound to have to do have union with that person for some reason. That's part of the karma. You have to do it, and then you're cleansed, and they won't even bug you no more. Nice. Yeah, but that's if you're in a, you have to be in a real mind, like, you have to know what's a bubble and what's not, you know? They're just bubbles, like, they don't last, they pop. You know, like, uh, attractions, attractions, attractions are bubbles, for sure. Yeah. Attractions are bubbles. The reason why I would say bubbles, or tantric people say bubbles, is because, like, the ocean, the beach, whoosh, there's all these bubbles, and they all pop. They all disappear. That means it's temporary. It's created, and it disappears. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't find them attractive anymore, then it's just disappeared. Yeah, if they're attractive, it's like, okay, wow, cool. You're walking your way. It's all good. You can say they're attractive. You can draw paintings of attractive women. If you're not attached, you can do it. A yogi can do whatever he wants. He can carve beautiful erotic women even or deities he's just not there in his mind he can carve a whole leg of a deity I mean he's not like fantasizing about them every day no he's not fantasy exactly I think fantasism is what creates problems yeah pretty much if you don't fantasize because you because you miss the present and that's where you're supposed to be Miss what? The present, because you're in the mind. Oh, yeah. No, that's the main thing, is being in the present. It doesn't matter if you're with a girl, having sex, you know how, or whatever religions are against sex. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're in the present, that's the whole key. 
That's the whole key. That's why that's why yogis can do uh, erotic stuff and everything because they're not they're not they're in the present. They're not like fantasizing and shit. You see what I'm saying? And then getting overly lusty. That's the whole difference. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. He's hit it right on the point. That's what it is. You're always constantly in the present, present, present. Truly renounced. Even a married person can be more renounced than a guy that don't have a wife. Yeah, because he's already experienced that. He experienced that, or he just knows his mind. He's, his mind's beyond it already. A sannyasi, they don't know if they're beyond it already. Already, they have to fall down to find out. Mm. Big difference. The married person already, he knows. He, he's cool. That's why. I notice, like, when you have all the temptations there, it's like, like normal, like to be normal. But then when you have it and you're so repressed, then you're like going yes. insane. Yoga is tricky. People don't understand it, and they go on the wrong route. Because they read something, go, oh, renounce this. Oh, renounce um, women and long pilgrimages. So they go, oh, renounce all women. No, it doesn't really mean like, like that. You know what I'm saying? It's trying to say something. It's trying to. It's about the present, dude. You know what I'm saying? It's about the present. It's not about avoiding pilgrimages. It's just avoiding like too much. Doing too much pilgrimages. That's why it's just long. You know what I'm saying? Meaning, don't do too much. Just relax. Relax. Be in your kutir. Because uh, um, Hatha Yoga Pratipika also talks about building a budget kutir. A little budget hut. <laughs> Good. But this is an old book. We don't have to do that. We got a house here. <laughs> yeah, nice. it says that. It says build a hut. And it says you build a fence. I think like so many meters away from your hut. Around you build a fence around your hut, mm -hmm. a fence of leaves like your sticks and then leaves, and you build a fence. You have your own property. Cool. Yeah. So they're the private property years. Yes, 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 yes. Yep. That's why that's that's what you call like kind of like yogi homesteading. <laughs> I'll show you all this, it's, but it's in another part. I have to find it. It tells you how to build a hut and it tells you how to build a fence. This is Goraknath talking, right? This is Goraknath, yeah, but written by another disciple, you know. But Gorak And I have a little question. Gorak Nath saying this though. Huh? Did he, did he have, did he, you know how like all the deities have like castles and palaces? Did Gorak Nath have one? I <laughs> know. No. Gorak Nath was a freaking piece of cow shit, man. Piece of cow shit. He is, why? <laughs> you don't believe me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was born from whatever I don't want to talk about that so <laughs> he was born out of cow shit <laughs> yeah nice <laughs> nice how long how many gigs do you have that for are you going to record forever <laughs> we already finished the pranayams but we could do this on our own we could talk about this dosha see how the how the yoga talks about doshas not like um the Patanjali stuff. Patanjali it, This is scientific, stuff. and it only has like four main things to get, you know, four stages, where Patanjali has eight stages. That's why it's called Ashtanga Yoga. Because yeah. eight stages, you know. Mm -hmm. This only has four. The main, main thing, but this is the original book. This is the yoga before all yogas. Yes. So would you say that Ashtanga Yoga is more bodily conceptual than the Hatha Yoga? No, it, uh... Yeah, it's more yeah, it's more bodily concept. Where Hatha Yoga teaches you how to focus on the energy in your body while you do yoga. Um, ha, uh, Ashtanga Yoga teaches you how to clear the mind, how to find, um, um, and also do uh, practice ahimsa, like different things. It's like very external. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you have all these eight stages, very external. But these eight, if you do these eight stages right, it leads to like dhyan, dhyan, and um, then some. The dhyan will bring samadhi. Is dhyan... The sixth stuff is, will is, make the dhyan very nice is on the, the dhyan, Is the dhyan the same thing as staying in the present? Dhyan is present, yeah. Like yeah. presence. Yes. Like presence. what Eckhart and Tolle dhanana says. also, too. Dhanana. Dhanana is concentration where there's a dot or chanting a mantra and stuff. And then the dhanana leads to dhyan. And he said then that dhyan leads to um, samadhi, the eighth stage. So would you say that chanting mantra, like the Hare Krishna mantra, is dharana? Yeah. And that will lead you into samadhi at one point? That gets you to dhyan. And then dhyan, once you're like sitting, after you do mantra, you have to feel the energy. You stop, you're just like, whoa. 
that's the dhyana. That's the experience of yoga. And then from dhyana, goes to samadhi. Then you cross the gates. Cross the gates of what? Of hell? Yeah. Probably, I don't know. The guy is probably is considered a sage or something. He goes, oh, maybe the gates of hell. I don't know. <laughs> but you can't, you can't. You only enter to samadhi when you get out of time, out of kala. Nice. And the person that's in control of that is kala. By love of kala. You know. Nice. You can't go past without that shield. Because he's the guard, the guardian of the... Yep. Of the guards of the gates. Mark kala, or whatever. Kala. Yep, kala. That's right. the main thing. Nobody can skip out kala. Not one person. No matter if you're going to um, Ayodhya or Vrindavan or all these places that are near Vana, right? Vanas are meaning, um, near meaning, Vanas without material qualities. Whatever Nirvana you go, you can't go to Nirvana without passing through the gates. You can't. That's the mind. Mm-hmm. And whatever you were meditating on, that's what will bring you, what will come to you in your Samadhi. It's not like all these external visions and shit. Oh, boy, you know, those are ghosts. What? Samad- yes, <laughs> those are like entities. When they people see it, like, you know, you just only see it somebody when you're purified, when you're not even pure, and then you have divine eyes. If you don't have divine eyes, you can't see it. You see ghosts that pretend to be gods. Not bullshit, you know. I'll show you everything right in here. Okay? You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. That's why practicing is good. Practicing is good. Because you know what? I think a lot of religions have been infiltrated by entities, forces, and traditions have been changed throughout time, throughout hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. They get infiltrated all the time by different entities. All the time. So they get lost, you know. Scary. Yes, exactly. That's when we're not, we're on our toes. You see? That's when we say, "Oh no, mystic powers don't amaze me no more." Now you become a true yogi, because now your mystic powers amaze you. It doesn't surprise you. You're a yogi. Um, what if you like get the this like really protective thing that is made out of? Um, the male onion. The what? Onion? The ma- the male garlic. Uh, garlic? Yeah. Well, no, the garlic keeps away vampires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with you. It no. It depends on the magic, you know? They do magic with garlic. They can use any herbs, they can use any plants. But it's garlic is a really powerful one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it they keeps can't... the uh, vitalos away. You tell them he's a vampire in Sanskrit. Dude, I need to get that. I feel like sometimes I go to places and I don't know why I get so drained. Like, it's really painful. Like, I have to, like, lay on the couch and I can't do anything. It happens to me all the time. When there's a lot, a lot of people, I just get drained. My energy gets sapped really fast. Yeah, because there's people sucking up energy. Um, Through their eyes, huh? Through their eyes or... Or, mm, drainage comes from a vitiation also in your pranas. Also. It's mm. the same thing as zapping your prana out. Interesting. Yeah. So there's those two things, and there's other ones too. So, yeah. It depends. You have to analyze your environment. That's why it's good to do practices, dude. It's good to do practices. <laughs> We're going to learn about uh, Shot Karma. I got to learn about Shot Karma too. Oh, what's Dalti? Dalti, Basti, Nepi, Trataka, Mali, Kapa, Kapal, Bhati. These are known as Shot Karma. Oh, okay. Or the six cleansing processes. Oh, that's the Panchakriyas. Yeah. So many Jananda talks about him, Panchakriyas. He's saying this, this is good to do. That's what I was saying. I told you, like you told me, the enemas are not good to do every day. But I, but it seems no, like no, not every day. 
No. No, he saying do this as a cleanse. But not every day. No, you don't do stuff every day like that. You, you, you do enemas every day. You about to vitiate your lower colon and you even have if it's value but wait 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 even if and negativity issues. But what w- even if it's with with oil. If it's with oil, it's fine. But you shouldn't do it every day because you have to fold that oil. Are you gonna do that every single day? Are you gonna go to work every day, worrying about that oil up your ass? <laughs> you know, you need a towel under you when you lay, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it leaks out. What about, what about neti, though? Oh, neti, you do every day. And then, if you do every day, then you do drops on your nose. Yeah, then you can do that. That's good for your prana. It actually charges you up. Cool. But if you do neti every day, for sure get the, the oil drops. Mm. Uh, with the herbs. And get you high. You ever try the oil drops? It gets you high, right? Mm. For like, it was like a minute or 30 seconds. I mean, I don't know if it gets you high, but it, I did. Dude, it. it gives me a buzz. Like, whoa. Mm. <laughs> Maybe because, I don't know, I'm just different. It just gives me a buzz. Like, Some people tripped out when they were doing, like, <laughs> when they were doing um that oil in the third eye. Oh, uh, yeah, because it's clearing all the impurities out. Dude, they get crazy. Them. They, like, yeah, start... You have to give them, like, calming tea or make them smoke a freaking joint. Dude. <laughs> uh, maybe not a joint. They might get, ah, I'm freaking out. All the impurities are busted out like a motherfucker. Because they're hallucinating. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, the marijuana was the wrong one. Just give them a different herb. <laughs> give them a different herb. CBD, CBD. Kava, kava. Kava, kava. <laughs> yeah, that third eye. When you do the oil clan on third eye, people freak out. I know, I Some saw it. Don't. It's because very they tricky. Because cool they, they have to be. They, they have a cool upbringing. Because they have to be like vata normal, not vata vitiated. Not vata vitiated, they have to have pranas. Yeah. If they're like real kappa, they won't even feel it. That's what happened no. to me. I wouldn't even, even feel it. Even kappa can get dramatized. Your pra- pranas, is d- it's your pranas, your five pranas. They cannot be vata. Oh. Yeah. You think Kappa don't have five pranas? <laughs> no, I do, but they don't feel shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do. They just mainly get depressed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the These shot karma, which affect purification of the body, are secret. They have manifold uh, wondrous results. And are held in high esteem by eminent yogis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? I can't do that Dao tea, man. Hell no. I just throw up. Which one is that one? Dao tea is putting like swallowing a cloth into your stomach and then taking oh, it out. Oh yeah. I rather go bleh, bleh, bleh. This is the same thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get all the phlegm out and throw up. Vamanas. Yeah. Vamanas is the same as Dao. So basically, you can go through this. And you figure out what you can do. Yeah. And then the same thing. But hey, you know, Vamana is illegal in America. Fucking America. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, you can't do it in the clinic, but you can suggest it. And you know? can't do leeches either. In yeah, America. America. Can't clean your blood out. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, America. Yeah. <laughs> Basti, yogic enema, that's what we should do. Yogic animals. I know, but... But this one is like you're sitting in the river. I don't know if there is that much these days. So it says right here, sitting in an utkasana, like this, oh. in the river, okay? <laughs> you go to the river, all right? This is how you get water up your asshole. <laughs> Navel deep in water, so it's up to here. You're in the water, sitting like this, with your legs spread out like this, with your feet like this. You open your butthole. <laughs> okay, knee deep. Uh, uh, enable the water's up to here mm-hmm. until you find a short little river, a little short spot, and you sit in it. Boom. Open your butt. Oh, insert. It. Oh, okay. You insert a tube, so the water goes through the tube. I guess you insert a tube into the anus and conduct the in. The so you have to like do ganja, ganga water. Yeah, it better be clean, dude. Don't have dirty water. You'll get sick. Oh. It's like drinking it. It's going through your digestion. You're going to absorb that shit. It's going to get you sick. Interesting. Yeah, that's why I say I don't trust reverse these days. But it's an enema. You don't have to do it like this. Like the, You don't have to do the Dao Tea. You can do a Vamana. 
Oh, good. Yeah, animal with um, filtered water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let's, let's stay safe here. <laughs> We're not to follow that to that scripture tea. Back then it was clean, okay? Nowadays, every religious person want to dirty the freaking river. When back then it didn't exist, okay? It was clean and nice and respected, you know? I don't know what happened these days. Religions. Don't give me an offense. Eh. Nobody even knows what that is. Even the highest, craziest people. What did I tell you about? What's the name? It starts with P. <laughs> he said, don't tell that lady to stop cleaning her kerosene stove in the freaking grotto coons. Why do you think it looks so dirty? Because nobody wants to say anything. Even the highest, supposedly highest and well-respected yogis don't even have the vision of how to keep that water nice or how to respect Radha. They rather offend Radha than the devotee or a person. The person that probably has nothing to do with Radha. It's just an Indian person that lives in the neighborhood. They'll say, uh, don't commit offense because they're what? A Raj Basis? It goes too weird. It's very religious. It's not like real, dude. So now we can't do um, Basis like a real yogi. We can't. So we fuck up Ganga, Yamuna. Oh, yeah, do whatever you want with the river. But, oh, we worship it. That's not worship. <laughs> Weird. Worshiping the earth is keeping it good. But wait, if you shit on the river or in the ocean, it's no. good. No, it's not. Shedding in the water is no good. You bury it. Peeing in the water is good. No, but if you shit in the ocean, the, 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 the fish come and eat it all. The ocean is a different story. You shouldn't shit in the water. They said, um... Like when animals shit in the water, they make announcements in Grass Valley saying, oh, there's been shit, so it, the water gets really bad because it's, it's from our shit <laughs> or our animal. It's not good. You bury it in the ground. Okay. You bury it. You do a little shovel. What does it say? Like, even the Bible says it. Bury your shit. What did Moses say? When you take your shit, go walk, dig a hole, and poop, right? They all say bury the shit because... I mean, maybe we don't want to step on it also, so they say bury it. Fuck it, bury it. It's human newer. It's good for the plants. It's better for out here than the water. Don't shit in the river, dude. Ever. That's bad. That's really bad. Uh, there's certain animals that can shit in the in the water. Birds can shit in the water. It doesn't do anything to the water. Uh, fish can shit in the water, of course. <laughs> I think. Wait, the fish shit? Fish shit. Wow. <laughs> they eat... So they shit. <laughs> they poop. <laughs> Do snakes shit too? Everything shits. Whatever it eats, it has to how shit. Do, how does it look, bro? I've never seen it. I don't know how a snake's shit looks, but a fish shit, it's like little pebbles. They come out. You ever see like fish tanks? Oh, yeah, in the fish tanks. Yeah. You're right, you're right. They are, every animal poops. <laughs> Even worms poop. Hmm. Yeah, they eat the dirt that comes out the dirt. This cleansing with water is called basti karma. So it's a particular action. Karma just means action. Cool. Yeah. So we just do it, Emma. Oh, see, it says right here in the commentary. So the commentary is pretty cool. Sometimes commentary is good. It says, although there are two forms of basti, dala and stala, only one is mentioned in this sloka, like the little one, you know? You see? What's the difference between jala and stala? Uh, I don't know. Jala is water. I don't oh, know what stala yeah. means. And I think stala is like you putting, doing it yourself or something. Jala is probably like when you go in a river. Oh, wait, wait. No, no. Oh, dry yogic enema. Ah. Uh, and jala is yoga animal with water. What's dry? Stala basti is performed wow. while laying on the back, assuming vipa rita karanai mudra. I'm positioned, but position the back at a 60 degree angle to the floor, then bring the knees down to the chest. Uh, push the sphincter muscles out. It's a dry basti. Out. And in so out and in so that air is sucked in the to the bow. This is not an easy practice and Jala Basti has to be perfected first. Oh, okay. So 
still do Java. Java just means water. Like you say. It's a water boss. Hmm. Traditionally, a bamboo tube. Oh, traditionally, you know what they use? What kind of tube they use? No. A bamboo tube. Damn. <laughs> I just take a bamboo up my ass <laughs> and go on the river. Yep. <laughs> I'm just joking. I gotta clean all those worms out. <laughs> Tubing or a cath catheter or a suitable but organic material is always preferable. <laughs> the tube should be at least 13 to 15 centimeters long. Perfectly smooth and hollow. Wipe it with beeswax or a non irritating oil such as Vaseline or ghee for lubrication. For you can go. Wait, how do they know about Vaseline back in the days? <laughs> this is a common theory. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the, the actual first just said the right word. It only mentioned Jala Basti, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm reading the commentary because I want to see what it's saying about enema. You know what I'm saying? I would use coconut oil because it's antiseptic. Yes, that me too. Oh, I was thinking that right now. I was thinking this before you said that. Yeah, right when I read Vaseline, not I go coconut oil. I don't even won't use the. I use coconut oil. You're mm. good. <laughs> it's antiseptic. It yes. cleans your asshole. <laughs> it's like my ass is clean. It's been antisepticized. <laughs> no, I was joking. <laughs> okay, insert four centimeters of the tube into the anal passage, or as much as comfortable. Then squat over the bucket in Utkatsana. In exhale, perform Udayan Bandha band if the water is not sucked up through the tube into the bowel, then do Madhyama Nali and hold. If the water is still not sucked up, do Vama or Dashina Nali. When you can no longer hold Kumbhaka, remove the catheter or, or tube without exhaling. Then stand up and exhale slowly through the nose. When you expel the water, it is best to squat over the toilet because stool in the lower intestine will also come out. Was Goraknath a vegetarian? <laughs> uh, I don't think any Siddha was a vegetarian. No, some Siddha was a vegetarian. Um, Machandanath, the first Siddha, wasn't a vegetarian. He was a fish. He ate fish. He was a fisherman. Um, and I want to know about Goraknath specifically. Goraknath. I don't know his diet exactly, but um. He didn't he feed off of milk only. I don't know. The thing is... Oh, he's probably a pranic... Oh, dude. He doesn't even eat, probably. Even Machanda not don't eat. None of the, any of the Mahasiddhas don't eat. They all want two stages of not eating. They became light bodies. Right. And you don't poop either. either. Yeah, but they were all meat eaters. And they didn't go, Oh, I sacrificed meat to attain a light body. They attain a light body and they stopped eating. No. Or they ate less. You see? Or they ate lighter foods. What is light foods? Foods that are maybe not, maybe foods that are vegetarian. Doesn't mean there's, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm for compassion for uh, this or that. It has nothing to do with that. It's about eating lighter foods. So they, um, and then at the, some point, they ate no food, meaning very light. So maybe what it means? Light body. Some of them were light bodies and still eating meat. Still eating, and they're light body, <laughs> but they weren't even killing any animals. All the animals became light body because they ate them. <laughs> That's why we don't even know. We can't judge anything. <laughs> in a way, in reality, if you want to ease your mind or something, but yeah. The 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 light body yogis that ate meat still eat food, and even though they were light bodies, made animals light body. It was beneficial for the animals to be eaten by a Mahasiddha. Like, just like it's beneficial for the horses to be in a horse sacrifice. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because then they achieve sense. demigod status. Yeah. They get, uh, no. 
they're given the demigods. Oh, or they get liberation. Or they, yeah, yeah. They get emotion. They get liberation, yep. Cool. And, uh, 